this is my my bass my bass guitar for uh, for Haunted. Um, originally, what I did is I was going to have two two bass tracks um, and have one that was more sort of sounded more like a synth bass, and then the other that sounded like um, more like a like a, a natural normal bass. Um, and so this was the the normal bass track as it's got all the same plugins as as this track as well. But then this track has the this fat FX on it. And what this did is on lo-fi resonance. And then what it did is it sort of added kind of white noise to the guitar a bit and just kind of made the guitar sound more like a synth bass. And when listening on headphones, it uh, it sounded sounded pretty good. But then when I when I got home and listened to it on speakers, um it actually it sounded pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, it didn't sound that good, so what I did is I decided I just I took that off and muted this, and I I just have one bass um, for it because actually I th you know I listened to it and stuff after I'd done all all the all this editing. I listened to the bass and actually thought I think it sounds okay with just the bass, sort of like in this intro section here where it's just the bass and. Um, in this bridge, in this bridge section here, um, but I think that um, I think it was the right decision just to have the bass on its own. What I've done is I I comped uh, the bass. We got um, with all the recordings and things. I've got loads of different recordings here and stuff, and comped it and taken all the all the best parts of it. When recording, I d I've done, like I've got a, I think this first recording goes all the way through the song, I believe, uh, yeah. And then afterwards we went, I went back and recorded, you know, different sections. I just did this intro section and then the verse and sort of cut up the recording just to keep it. So the, the player doesn't have to um, play through the song you know, um, every single time and get tired so they can have little breaks and sort of play for shorter periods of time to keep their sort of playing it's still good, you know, it's still at a good standard the whole time and they're not getting as tired as much. Because um, also if you play the whole track, it means potentially by the time you get to the end, you know, they're getting pretty tired and actually their playing can get quite lousy, quite, um, you know, just not as good as at the beginning. So by sort of recording just this end section on its own and stuff, the, the it makes it's easier on the player and the chances are that they'll probably play it better than having played through the whole song and then playing the end as well, you know. So that's sort of what I did with comping. And then I've got the uh, EQ compressor noise gate. Uh, the uh, EQ's just on uh, eBase and I've just sort of, you know, made it slight adjustments. Um, but Basically, the idea is it's increasing the lower reson resonances of the bass. If you wanted, you could just sort of, um, if I can, you know, remove sort of the super low end of the bass, or you know, something like that, because actually the bass is um, those really low frequencies you'd never really hear anyway. But you know, I thought it was was fine as it is, and doing that didn't wasn't didn't really add or take anything away. So I thought it was fine. Just got a little bump here, just to sort of, um, you know, get those the high, the slightly higher frequency of the bass and like bass harmonics and sort of the, the plucking and a bit more of the attack of the bass. That's sort of why this is here. And then just rolling off the higher ends because the bass is off, you know, fairly low sounding, and so uh, the higher ends aren't really needed. And also there'll be you know other parts of the track. That will take up this space. We don't need the bass, um, you know, on the taking up the high ends of the stereo spread as well. And then I got a noise gate uh, and a compressor. Uh, the compressor is just is on eBay Studio VCA, uh, compressing quite harsh actually, and you know it um, boosting the bass and increasing the the, la the noise and of the bass quite a lot. 
but I think it definitely just adds more uh, more sort of low end and more power behind the bass and I think I think power behind a bass is very important. I think a bass that doesn't really have a lot of powers can often be just a bit just a bit thin and a bit not sound as good. So I think definitely adding adding a bit more power behind that bass really, you know, lifts the lower end of the track and gets it going. Um and then a noise gate as well, just sort of reducing any, you know, uh any uh pops or clicks or anything from the you know that are quiet and things and just removing anything that doesn't need to be heard. And then we go on to the bass amp here. It's the same bass amp that I will use for um for all the tracks. I think using the same bass amp is it's the is sort of um it allows the the bass to sort it sounds to sound similar throughout all the songs, which means it sort of connects the songs. Like obviously the songs will sound different, but it's it doesn't sound like four totally separate tracks. There are still elements of the four tracks connecting up, so it sounds like it's still one band playing all four tracks, which I think I think is good. And so the the bass is fairly high, and then the mids and the treble slightly lower. I think I think I don't you know I think it's good not to have sort of like the treble all the way down. I think having some treble is definitely important because it allows you know to have some just higher end, and it means the bass isn't just sort of like a low like mumble sort of a thing where it's sort of it's just sort of a low resonant that, that where nothing can really be made out i don't think i don't think that's very good um but i think having having some treble and some mid is definitely a uh, you know a, a good idea i think all bass can just be a bit overkill and then again the uh, the mic placement quite far out so there's quite a lot, a lot of distance between the mic and the speaker. I think, I think that's good because you know it allows space, gives the bass, you know, a chance to breathe and you know, chance to sort of you know move about and have some freedom, which I think is I think is good. Then I've also got a sub bass on, just sort of boosting the bass. You know, sort of this is sort of like support for the bass, really sort of backing it up and giving the bass some power behind behind the track and then also an exciter but just it's just sort of adds like a bit of i don't a bit of texture to the bass it adds sort of those higher end frequencies just sort of mix in a bit and just adds sort of more i, f I feel like it's more natural adds some some natural qualities to the bass which which i like um, you know, I sort of added this on, and then was sort of messing about, and found that it sounded quite quite nice, and so decided to to leave it in. Um, and then the fat was from when I was trying to do the uh, the synth bass kind of idea, but um, it didn't it didn't really work. Um, and so yeah, and then here we've got also we got a second sub bass, also on bass booster. Which is sort of partly increasing the bass as well. It's just sort of extra, extra bass. Um, you might think it's sort of maybe overkill and things and stuff, but I think it. You know, I think it sound. I think it sounds good, and um, I think it definitely adds more low end. Although the thing about now, you could just sort of uh, turn turn that off, but then turn it up on here. But then I think often the bass is too loud, um, you know, and just sort of takes over the track. So having it sort of lowered down is, I think, is good. But then also still having that low end bass pushing it, so it's not, you know, overkill on the track. But the bass can still clearly be be heard. Um, so that that's the uh, bass guitar. This track was all the same, uh, but without without the um, the uh, fat FX on it. But apart from that, yeah, that's uh, that's what I did for the base.